Hi everyone, this is Chucks from the SharePoint team. Today I want to show you a demo of building cascading dropdowns in Power Apps. In Power Apps meaning the embedded apps that you build as well as the custom forms that you build with SharePoint list. So to start with I have a list of countries here and then I have a list of cities for each of those countries. Now Usually when you build a SharePoint list, like say for example here department stores, you would want to also tag the country and the city that the store belongs to. So this is exactly what I'm doing here in this demo. So if I go to my custom form here, I have the title, I have the owner. Now one of the things I have done here, instead of making the country and city a lookup field, which sometimes can make things complicated in Power Apps, I am basically referencing them as text fields. And then in my custom form, I'm going to use the cascading dropdown capability to select the right country and the city within that country. So let's look at how to go do that. Now, to add more fields in Power Apps custom form, all you have to do is select the SharePoint form here in your screens. And once you get the properties, you see the fields. If you click Edit Fields, you're going to get a call out that allows you to add fields or, in fact, remove fields as well. So let me add a field. And here I can see I have my country field. So let's add that first. And as soon as it gives me the option, you can see that I can select the control type. I can have it as simple edit text, or I can actually have different ways to get the input from the user. So here, since this is going to be a drop down, or you know, this is going to be a, a collection of values that I'm going to represent to the user, I'm going to say this control type is going to be of allowed values. And once that is done, now I'm able to actually get a collection and then apply to this control, which when presented to the user during the form input, it will show and allow the user to select one of those values. So quickly, let's close this for now. And all we want to do here is bring all our uh, countries, right? So I have USA, New Zealand, Australia, India to kind of show up here in my drop down in this country. So again, this is not a drop down. This basically is a text control behind the scenes. But since we had allowed values as the type of input, it acts like a drop down. So uh, to do that, first, you need to connect to the countries list. Now I have done that already. So if you go to your data sources and you can add a data source and connect to uh, a specific list in SharePoint. So that's what I've done. I've already connected to the countries list and I have also connected to the cities list. So I have both of those uh, configured here already. So now all we have to do is go and edit this control to bring all of the values from the countries list. So the first thing I have to do, since this is something, a new control I added to the data card, um, if you click on that country data card, you will see in the properties that while here you are able to edit several things, you can't change the behavior of this control. So to change the behavior of this control, you go to advanced and then you click unlock to change all of the properties. So now if you actually go look at the drop down, which is here data card value four, um, you will see some options here to set. Now I'm going to rename this so we are clear on what we are actually um, editing and, and referencing. So I'm going to say DD countries. There you go, that's, that's much better. And in the items, instead of getting some values from the parent, I want to get the distinct values from the data source and specifically tell what to display from the data source. So I use the function called distinct, and then I'm going to give the source, in this case, it is countries list. And then I'm going to display the title column from that list right so now what i'm doing here is for this particular control get all of the values from the country's list and in that just project the title column to be the one that is visible to the end user great so now you can see i already have a value populated here so to test this quickly 
what I can do is I can click on the drop down hold the alt key in your keyboard and now you will be able to preview the values right here in this form now if you are using a power app standard app like embeddable app that you create you can probably preview it as well but here the easiest way to do this is just hold alt key and then now you'll be able to preview the control there great so now we have done the countries list so let's go build the cities control so to add the city control is the same. I select the form and in the properties, I get to now edit fields. And here I can add a new field and select city, right? Pretty easy. So now once I do that, I'm going to do the same thing. It's no longer to be represented as a text field. It's going to be a text field with some allowed values. Great. And the next thing I have to do is exactly the same thing I did with my control set in when modifying the country, right? So I have to go and unlock this to change properties. So I'm going to do that. Now you can see this drop down has an option for depends on. So all this means is this values over here that I display in this drop down depends on some other value right so that's exactly what cascading drop down means for me it's the country so if I select USA I want to see the cities belonging to that USA countries very simple right so let's go do that so I click the control here for the city drop down and then I go to depends on and now I can see an option to select the parent control so here I can select the countries list and then it's going to be the result of that so if it's USA it's USA if it's New Zealand it's New Zealand and matching field and here exactly what I'm supposed to do is I take that value from the parent control and what should I match it with so in our case uh, it's the cities list right and and previously when I showed you I had connected the data source already to the cities list so that's how that's how I can see here now if you haven't you can click add data source and do that here as well so let me select the cities and from there what is the field I would have to match and for me it's the country field right so now what this would do is if I type in USA then it's going to go select all of the cities that are mapped to USA it's really simple so now as soon as I apply you can see that it actually now has those formula um, here that filters the cities and then countries from the particular selected result the other thing I can do here value you can see here it's actually displaying something random so I'm going to go to title so that it can actually display the title of the city from the city list so here there you go so now I have USA and CL so I can already see some uh, changes over here and again if you want to preview this go to the city drop down hold down your control key and you should be able to see the cities for that uh, in, in the preview in the designer so great that looks good so now let me publish this to SharePoint and see how it works, whether we are able to get the cascading drop down work and add a new item to this. So click new to add a new item in the list. And now we get the form here and you can already see the values being populated for the country and the city. So I'm going to add myself here as the owner of this store. And now I can see I get all of the countries from the country list. So let's say I'm picking New Zealand here and you can see the city already changing to the cities that are mapped with New Zealand uh, in the cities list. And if I select India, I'm going to get the same thing. The city uh, drop down will change with all of the list uh, with the India, uh, all of the list with the country India tagged with it. But if I do select Australia, you can see that I don't get any values and that's by design because I actually don't have any cities here marked with the country Australia so that's by design and that actually shows that um, the list is the cascading drop-down is actually working so let me go ahead and let's pick a country and a city and click save and that should add the new item to the list so that's how the cascading drop downs work in power apps and custom forms now if you follow if you want to follow a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to build this um, you can go to this link https aka.ms slash power apps hyphen cascading hyphen drop downs and that will take you 
to the document uh, which describes how to build this step by step with two SharePoint list data source and exactly the steps that I did here in my demo. Um, so hopefully if you have any, uh, hopefully this helped you to build uh, cascading controls and power apps. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me, you can tweet to me or you can um, DM me in Twitter and I will do my best to respond and help you folks. Otherwise, you can always participate in the ideas forum and uh, in power apps and flow to um, get your question out. Thank you. Thank you.